Okay, in this video, I'll show you guys how to write any real number as an infinite nested square root. So what do I mean by that? Let me show you. Of course, we have to pick a number first. You can pick pi, you can pick e, you can pick omega, you can pick square root 17, up to you. But I will keep this right here simple, so I'll say 5. And I'll write it right here. I will just begin by saying, let x equal to 5. And then from here, we'll do some algebra. I will subtract 5 on both sides, so I get x minus 5 equals to 0. And you see that here we have a linear factor. Well, this linear factor has a positive root, namely positive 5. We chose it. In this case, you want to multiply both sides by a linear factor that has a negative root. Similarly, if you chose a negative number, then right here, you have to multiply both sides by a linear factor that has a positive root. But anyway, let me show you. I will multiply this by, let's say, I will just keep it simple, so I'll pick x. And in order for me to get a negative root right here, I will add a positive number. This number shall be one less than this, so that the number will be easier. So I'll just say x plus 4. And let's multiply x plus 4 on both sides, like this. Why one less than this? You'll see. Because when you multiply this out, you get x squared, and then x times 4 is 4x, and then negative 5 times x is negative 5x. When you combine, you get nice d, negative x. Well, you get a really nice negative x. Negative 1x. This is really nice. Of course, if you put x plus 2, that's fine too. Anything up to you. But if you continue from here, this times that is negative 20. And on the right hand side, of course, this times that is just 0. And now you have a quadratic equation, but I will move both of these terms to the right. And we have x squared, that's equal to, let me write down the 20 first, and then let me put down the plus x right here. And of course, here we have the square, I will take the square root on both sides. But as always, don't forget the plus minus, and here is the deal. You see, we have the plus minus for the square root. This is why you have to have one factor that gives you positive root and the other factor that gives you negative root. So, it depends which number you want to get. I want to get to 5, so I will keep the positive square root. If you want to get to negative 4, you keep the negative there. Anything up to you. So, let me just get rid of the negative right here because I am trying to get rid of I'm trying to get to positive 5. Okay, this marker is supposed to be blue, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, so what we're saying is that x is equal to positive square root of 20 plus x. And now, let's do the following. Let me make a note right here. This equation is true in green. Of course, it will be true in red. x is equal to square root of 20 plus x. And if you look at this equation again, you have x right here, and you also have x right here. This is really similar to the time that we were doing infinite continuous fraction. Because now you see you have this right here, which is x. I will just put this into here. And we will have x equals to square root of 20. And you add this x, which is the same as that, so you put down another square root of 20 plus x, like this. This is why it's called the nested square root. Not nasty square root. <laughs> Sometimes it might be nasty, but this is called nested. N-E-S-T-E-D. Square root. Meaning that you have a square root instead of another square root, right? So, this is really cool, isn't it? But, of course, we don't have to stop right here. Because we see the x right here. Of course, we can put this into this x, right? So if you would like, this is the same as saying x equal to square root of 20 plus square root of 20 plus this x, which is the same as that. So open the square root of 20 plus x, which is the same as square root of 20 plus x, which is the same as the square root of 20 plus da da da. So right here, let me just put down the dot 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 right here. So you see, we have infinitely many square roots instead of this square root. So this is why it's called the infinite nested square root. And in fact, when you see this right here, x, don't forget it was 5. So congratulations, we just see that 
phi is equal to square root of 20 plus square root of 20 plus square root of 20 plus dot dot dot. So this is a super equation, <laughs> the super form of the, uh, the number 5, like this. Really cool, isn't it? Of course, if you keep the negative, you end up with negative 4. If you would like, let me just write it down. If you would like, you will get actually negative 4. It's equal to negative square root of 20 and then minus square root of 20 minus the square root of 20 and then minus da da da. You can also do this if you kept the minus earlier. So up to you. And this is pretty much it. And if you want to write out general formula, you don't put on 5. You put on like A. Put on R. Up to you. So that's pretty much it. And now the question is, when you see this, does this really converge to 5? And now we are talking about some kind of analysis right here. So this is pretty much how, what I wanted to do with you guys. When you see this right here, it's a following. You begin with square root of 20. This is technically your first term. And then next, you have square root of 20 plus square root of 20. And next, you have square root of 20 plus square root of 20 plus square root of 20. And this sequence keeps on going. And of course, when you see this kind of sequence, you can do the following. You can write this down as a recursive formula because this term is actually based on the previous term. Yeah, if you look at it this way. So here is the deal. Depends on what you want to start. You can say n is equal to zero. You can say n is equal to one. Up to you again. I will just say define. I'll just put this down. We can define a sequence such that let's use x, uh, x, and uh, let me use one x1 to be this, which is square root of 20. And then I will have the next term, let's say xn, which is this. This term is based on the previous term. And you pretty much do this, which is you still do the square root, and you still have the 20. But you have to make sure you put this previous term right here. So you just add xn minus 1. This is pretty much the recursive formula for it. This right here is true for n greater than or equal to 2. So that's pretty much the recursive formula for that. And the real business comes in. Does this deconverge? We have to really talk about it. First of all, you should just use the calculator and enter these numbers on the calculator and see the pattern. And you should notice two things. So I will just write this down for you guys. The first thing is that you should notice that this sequence is actually increasing. And it's not hard to see because each every time you are just adding more things instead of the square roots, right? But I will just write it down for you guys. The first thing is that xn is increasing. And the second thing that you have to know is that if you just really use the calculator to enter like these numbers and see the results, you will see that this sequence is what we call the bounded above, meaning that there's like a maximum, that kind of thing. There's an upper bound technically. So I will say xn is bounded. And when you're saying increasing, you should be mentioning bounding above. So bounded above. And you should also say what number it is. Bounded above by 5. I'm kind of cheating because I knew it was 5. But seriously, use the calculator. Maybe do it to like a 5, 6 terms or so. You will really see that this number is approaching 5. But these are the two statements that you should mention. And I will actually do a detailed proof in another video because both of these statements required inductions. So that will be pretty long. But anyway, when you have a sequence that's increasing and also bounding above, then you can, uh, you can conclude that. So you can just say, therefore, xn actually converges. Once again, you have two, these two statements, and there's a theorem that guarantees that xn will be a convergent. So you can pretty much say that. And now, ignore that, seriously. Just focus on this. If you would like, this is how you can figure out what does this converges to. Because now you know xn converges, you can say, let xn goes to L, right? Let L be the limit of that as n goes to infinity. Here you have xn minus 1. If xn goes to L, 
well, x uh, minus 1, that will also go to L as well. And you are going to just plug in the L into this equation right here. You are saying that, I'll just put on, so you are saying that L is equal to square root of 20 plus L. And of course, you're pretty much doing this backwards now. And it depends on which direction you're going. Because you might start with a phi and write this phi as an infinite nest, <laughs> nested square root. Or you might be given a recursive formula or maybe a recursive, or maybe like infinite nested square root and you're trying to figure out what this number is. But if you are doing this direction, this is what you do. And from this equation, of course, you can square both sides. L squared is equal to 20, minus, 20 plus L and then bring these two terms to the other side. So you are saying that L squared minus L minus 20 is equal to zero. Factor this, L minus five times L plus four equals to zero. And you see this is L is equal to four, five. L is equal to five or L is equal to negative four. Here, of course, L cannot be negative four because you see this is square roots. But this is positive square roots, so this is not possible. And you pretty much get L is equal to 5. In another word, if you're going from this direction, you're saying that this right here approaches 5. So this right here is how you can do it as well.